You know I got my moves, the shoulder move. You know, it's my signature move. My mom said, by the way, she's like, you know, you look a little mean in some of those. I was like, listen, sometimes you got to be mean with the modern women. Sometimes you just got to be mean. Just saying. Welcome, everyone. Hello. It doesn't feel like a Monday, but it is. I have a very special guest in the house today. The title of today's episode, Things Women Love But Will Never Admit. We have Sterling Cooper in the house. Welcome, Sterling. Good to be back. Giving you an intro. Yeah, that's right. Sterling was on uh, a couple weeks ago with Justin, but I was like, I've never had him one-on-one. I got to have him one-on-one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first tell you what we're going to talk about a little bit today. I just wanted to dangle Sterling in front of y'all so you get excited. Oh, yeah. Then I'm going to do an ad read, which is important because I got to get you healthy. Listen, someone's got to do it. May as well be me. And then we're going to dig in to our first topic. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about... You know it. Some sex, some politics, everything in between. We're going to talk about masculinity. Is it in crisis? Are women with male friends lying about what's really going on? We got some fresh and fit clips for you. I know you're going to love them. Sterling's going to respond to those. Has feminism wrecked men? And is it about to get worse? We're going to talk about that. Are feminized men really the ones who are toxic to society? We're going to even dig into some politics. We got the Eat Bugs campaign. I have a very long list of things that I want to cover with Sterling today. So get excited. And by the way, our first topic is going to be common mistakes men make in the bedroom and how you can fix them. So he's going to tell you what you need to do, guys. If you're at home, you're wondering, he's going to tell you. Before we dig into all that, I got to talk Cosandrinos. This morning before I was here, you know I love my healthy fats. You know I want to get you healthy. I took a spoonful of olive oil from Cosandrinos and I just swallowed that right on its own. I felt fantastic. It's delicious. Why do I care about this company? As you know, the matrix is coming for all of us. You know that. So I got to keep you healthy. Cosandrinos does that. It's a veteran-owned company. It's completely family-owned. This is your farm to table. It's the only olive oil that I use in my house. Why, you ask? Well, number one, it tastes delicious. We all, we're not going to consume something healthy if it doesn't taste good, right? So it tastes delicious. I'm Italian. I know my olive oil. Number two, I love that it's family owned and operated. I also love that it doesn't sell in stores. Why, you ask? Because oftentimes when you go to the store and you buy oil, whether it's avocado oil or olive oil in this case, by the time you get that product, it is rancid. What does that mean? That it's lost its taste, that it's lost its nutrient value. Why? Because it's been sitting on the shelves for a year or more from the time that it's, you know, manufactured, you know, the olives are picked, whatever you need to do. I'm not an expert in how they make olive oil, but whatever that happens to the time when it gets to your table has been a very long period of time. They don't store it properly. So all this light hits it. Basically, you're getting something that's been compromised and tastes nasty. So what does this company do that's different? Well, you can't buy it in stores. You buy it on the website, which means that nothing has been sitting around on the shelves, which means that you are getting that batch that fresh batch farm to table experience from that specific harvest. So the antioxidants, you're eating olive oil for antioxidants. It doesn't do you any good if the antioxidants are depleted. Now, why do I like Cosandrinos? It's pesticide-free farming, no nasty chemicals, nothing to mess with your health. Every batch goes through two independent third-party tests. You can go right on their website. You can see all of that information, peak antioxidant value to detox your body. Olives are hand-picked. They're not machine harvested. How cool is that? I love that when people do things like old school like that. Now, say you're on a special diet. These are non-GMO, keto certified, paleo certified, certified organic, coal pressed to preserve nutrients. This is not the same as the organic olive oil you buy in the store. That has been sitting out there for a long time. This is fresh, okay? I'm telling you, you got to trust me. If you like to cook or someone you love likes to cook, give it a whirl. I promise you, you are not gonna be disappointed. Special offer for you today, you're gonna get 25% off. Go into the description and you're gonna click on the link has my very special code you had over there. They also have balsamic vinegars. They have all sorts of cool stuff that you could buy for a gift for somebody. I actually just bought it for my mom, the Italian queen from Naples. And she was like, oh, this is delicious. I said, see, mama, you got to listen to your daughter more. Cosandrinos, go do it. I'm telling you, we talk about the matrix. Don't make me force you to be healthy. Do it on your own. All right. Sterling, I'm back. I know it was a bit of a, a deviation, but I had to dangle you in front of the audience so that they get excited. Dangle, no, dangle away. Dangle right away. And look, we even matched today, so it's off okay. to a good start. All right. So, and we're going to give you a chance to plug everything. I know you have books. I looked at your website. I was like, what's going on? It was like that lead picture, by the way, of you with the girl's legs. Fantastic. I love that photo. <laughs> the the stockings like with the seam. One of my favorites. <gasps> Very sexy photo. That People was my should... idea, too. I was like, stand up here. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to talk to you first about the bedroom because you are a former adult film star. 
We're going to dig into that a little bit. Um, a sinner. <laughs> a sinner. A sinner. Right. Former adult film star. The His website. You can go to it if you want. Don't do it now, though, because do it after the interview. SterlingCooper.com. And now you're doing, like, advice not just related to sex, although I do see a lot of that on your Twitter feed that you pump. But it's like male improvement at large, really. Would you say that? Yeah, because I think the two are very intimately connected. And there's so many men not having sex that want to be having sex right now yeah. is the thing. And it's a. Ref I look at the bedroom as like a microcosm, a reflection of like the relationship at large. Mm. When things are going well in the bedroom, they tend to go really well outside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. The relationship tends to be more harmonious. Right. People tend to be, you know, in their polarities, they're masculine and they're feminine. Yeah. When everything is sort of in line in the bedroom. And when it's not in line like that in the bedroom, that's when things tend to get out of it's whack. It's like a domino effect of chaos in very the much. house. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Very much so. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, you have, is it a book called The Common, The Five Subtle Mistakes Men Make in the Bedroom and How to Fix Them? That's a, all my books are ebooks. Okay. So you that's, have my, this, that's a free one, yeah. Okay, you have this ebook out and the title was interesting to me. So talk to me about what are some of these mistakes that guys are making cool. that are easy to fix. Yeah. Let's go. Well, okay, let's start with the, what I just talked about, the masculine feminine polarity, right? The one is that dudes aren't leading in the bedroom. Okay. Right. Now, maybe this is because they're not confident, low self-esteem, they're a bit shy, a bit unsure of what to do. But whatever the cause is, the, the problem is that they're not leading their partner in the bedroom. They're not mm -hmm. you know, taking control of the sexual interaction. And they're expecting the woman to tell them what to do, show them what to do. Uh, they're expecting to have some sort of conversation back and forth about what to do. Right, rather than just being the man stepping up and and taking the risk of maybe making a mistake here and there, which is mm. totally fine, right? And I'm not saying doing anything obviously, you know, un untoward, right? Uh, you know what I'm getting at. But step one, being the leader in that bedroom, because that masculine feminine polarity, like I talked about, is very very important. And women like a guy who is quote unquote dominant in the bedroom. For that's a pretty good way of describing it in general, is this dominant energy, right? Because what does that do to her? Well, that allows her to be present in the moment because she can, she, like all responsibility is now on his shoulders. Mm. When a guy steps up and leads in the bedroom, is more dominant in the bedroom, she can just relax. He's got everything handled. He can take care of it. She doesn't have to be in her head. And when a woman is in her head, that is the antithesis of her being able to climax, basically. Mm. A woman can't climb. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. Please, I'd love to know if I'm wrong about any of this. Oh, we're going to have a debate now. Oh, I love it. Let's <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying it. to debate. Yeah, no, no. I like to be told I'm correct all the time. Right. But there you go. But if a woman's in her head, she mm. can't climax. If she's, mm. if she's either, you know, say, thinking about her worries from the day or maybe she's just thinking about what is he doing? He doesn't know what he, he's... He looks insecure in what he's trying to do here. He looks unsure. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's making me nervous as a woman. Right. So now I'm in my head and it's the completely wrong energy. We're going the wrong way down. Mm -hmm. We're going into a negative spiral, right? So yeah, dudes leading in the bedroom is very, very important. I think along that same line, guys trying too hard to please their partner. This might sound mm -hmm. a bit paradoxical, but let me elaborate. So guys trying too hard to please their partner. If a guy is in the bedroom with a woman and he has, like, he doesn't want to please his partner, but he needs to, like his his self esteem would be destroyed if she didn't climax, mm -hmm. right? That that needy energy women can pick up on instantly. Yeah, that's true. Instantaneously, they'll pick up on that in the bedroom. So he's coming across really needy, desperate to please her, and you know maybe he's he's. Uh, how do I say this in a polite way where on, it's, he's in between her legs with his head for you oh, know, okay. an extended period of time trying to like... And, and not and not making it happen to boot? Yeah, he's not making it happen because she can tell that what he's... He, she can tell that he is just too desperate to, to make yeah. this so happen. So basically like a frazzled guy who's like trying to make her happy, but... And, and I wonder if that also is like then the guy's not really in the moment either. Like no yeah, totally. one's in the moment. He's in, he's, he's in his head. Right. Because... Energy is contagious when and you're in the bedroom as a guy. You want to be the leader. Again, this is not just physically, but this is also mentally. If you go there first, she's going to follow you. So if you're mm. feeling confident and comfortable, she's going to feel confident and comfortable around you in that situation with you. If you feel nervous and unsure of what you're doing, she's going to feel nervous and unsure, and then that's going to make her feel unsafe. 
mm-hmm. actually, right. in the bedroom. A woman right. feels a lot more safe in the bedroom with a guy who knows what the hell he's doing, mm-hmm. right? And then oddly enough, those kind of guys are actually able to do things to her that she enjoys, which might be a bit more extreme. You know, we you kind of know where I'm going with that. Right. But that comes down to him being confident in what he's doing and, and leading her there confidently and with self-esteem and not being skittish, like you said, not being not half-stepping, not doubting himself. Because the moment right. he doubts himself, that she starts to doubt him in the bedroom and she starts to feel unsafe. And that's really, really important for men to make their partner feel safe and comfortable yep. in the bedroom, but in a way that is not... Uh, how do I say this? In a way that is not like you're sitting there running down a checklist. Right. And you're just going through like a consent yeah. form, you know? There's this big, big push to try and say, say this idea of like consent is sexy, right? And obviously we want, everyone wants consent. Like you don't, you shouldn't be doing anything like this but there isn't any consent in the first place. Mm-hmm. To me, that's like obvious. But I can tell you as a guy who's shot professional BDSM scenes, that there's nothing that destroys sexual tension quicker than sitting there and going through a checklist of what you can and can't do to your partner. Can you imagine? I can't. So I know, I've know i been in that situation and I know how much it destroys sexual tension. So when people say like, oh, consent is sexy and, you know, women like a guy who... I always hear women say this whenever I ask them, what do you like in a guy in the bedroom? And it's like, oh, someone who communicates... No, you don't. No. No, you really don't, though. That's what they say. They Someone say that. They'll, they'll always say communicate or communication. They'll it's say not communication. Time for a debate, honey. It's not a but discussion. What, but here's, here's my interpretation, and maybe yeah. I'm wrong, but I, I think I'm right. Here's my interpretation of what they actually mean when women will say they want, a, they want, they value communication in the bedroom. They want a man who can read her body language properly. Mm-hmm. Right. So then she doesn't actually have to say anything. He should be able to pick up on her body language on her vibe okay she's very she's comfortable with what i'm doing right now or she's just she just tensed up a little bit cool we're not going to go that way right we're going to try something different now right because that that explains to her okay this guy can tell if i'm uncomfortable big green tick Mm -hmm. right he's got a bit of experience obviously because Mm -hmm. otherwise he wouldn't be able to tell this that's another it's another big green tick so there's all these really subtle things and a lot of guys these days are very very worried about you know, Me Too allegations and whatnot in the bedroom and things like that. And I can completely understand why they would be concerned about this. But one of the best ways to kind of get around that and avoid that entirely is not to be afraid of women, not to be afraid of the bedroom and not to be afraid of pursuing things that are a bit more, say, uh, edgy, Mm -hmm. right? Because they're actually very enjoyable for your partner. But more to understand body language cues in the women when you're in bedroom so you know, okay, I know that I won't push a boundary. Yep. Because you don't want to ever, ever go past someone's boundary in the bedroom in that way. And look, if you make a mistake, if you do, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Just don't go there again. Pull back and change direction, right? But guys coming into the bedroom being very, very timid and afraid like that isn't helping them from the very start. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And you've had... By the way, people in the chat, the chat is open today. I will be reading the super chats. If you have a question for me, if you have a question for Sterling, please, we're going to get to all of them. So please ask away, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You know you need to do it. So as somebody I'm interested, I have a bunch of comments on this. One was that, you know, you're talking about women and when they can and can't climax. Women really, and I talk about this in life, women need to feel peace. Like they can't feel stressed in any area of life to be productive. So if we're in the bedroom and we're stressed, it's not happening. Yeah. If we're in the bedroom and we're nervous, it's not happening. If we're in the bedroom and we're thinking, why is he doing that, blah, blah, blah. Second, our mind starts going too much. And by the way, this happens with work in regular life. We just freeze. We don't operate well like that. So that's why women like a dominant man because you come in, you take charge. We're like, oh, he's got this. We get to kind of relax. And when we are peaceful, everything runs smoother. It runs smoother for us and then hence for you and for the whole experience. So I would agree with that. But as somebody who's, I mean, you've had a lot of sex. I mean, let's just be open about it. A lot. Probably a little bit more than average. Yeah. <laughs> just a tad. Just a tad. And I'm curious though, be, you know, you've had a lot of, of sex with people who, 
you haven't had any emotion with obviously you worked in the adult film industry so maybe you're maybe you had you know some polite exchange or whatever you're not in love is what I'm saying yeah, yeah. and then I'm sure you've been in relationships where you know there are emotions involved and whatnot do you observe different things about women in those two cases like what what's different because what I would think if I were a woman let me be straight with you if I were a woman and say I was single you and I went out on a date I, in the back of my mind would be like, oh, this guy, like he's had sex for a living. Like he's going to do this and it's just going to be like a thing he does. It's not going to mean anything. <laughs> you know, that, that would go through a woman's mind. Have you uh, encountered that? Or so, like- interesting question that the, a little bit of an insight into the secret insight into the adult film world. Okay. Every single professional performer, not necessarily like OnlyFans people, yeah. right? But people who work in the professional side of the industry with the big film cameras and stuff like that. All of them in their private life back home when the cameras are off is just missionary. Really? Because they're bored of doing, like, they don't want to work. You spend all day, like, turning upside down and doing ridiculous things. <gasps> I love it. All day, for hours on end, you're like, I just want simple, peaceful, like, five minutes done. Like simple really? Stuff. Like, wow. Obviously okay. enjoyable and passionate. Enjoyable, like, but not like but it's acrobatic. Not, com- not acrobatic and complex. No. I love it. <laughs> it doesn't really <laughs> turn into that. Um, yeah, people have this impression of like, like your favorite adult star is going to be like crazy in their private life. Most of the time, no. Mm-hmm. And this is not just me. This is like everyone else I've talked to in the industry. It's, yeah. Say has a partner back home, whatever. Would you date a woman who I had used been to. in the adult I, u- film? I used to when I first got in, I dated, but it was mostly like a networking thing, if I'm being honest. Would that, is, is, wouldn't that be weird for, for a guy generally? I mean, yeah, it's not like ideal. I, wouldn't, I definitely don't do that anymore. I wouldn't do that anymore. Right. Um, but at the time it was like, it was really like a networking move. Right. Because that's the way, that's the way guys get work is like women. Oh, One of the big ways okay. is w- women recommending you. And if, you're, if mm-hmm. you are with someone who is in the Got industry it. already okay then you should try this guy you should you should try booking this guy because i'm That's she's not so even gonna, she's not even gonna tell the director i'm dating him wow. but she'll recommend you to a bunch of dudes so do like, you hear from guys that are trying to mimic that acrobatic stuff and like try to do all that oh. stuff they see they look at you know tv it's, whatever and and they're just is that is that grouped into the trying too hard and going the wrong way i think i think if a dude's trying to pull off the pile driver move <laughs> On like a first date, I think I don't that's even a, know what that is, and I don't need an explanation. Don't, don't Google it. I don't uh, need to know. <laughs> it's awful. It's terrible for everyone involved. No one enjoys that. It's just, I mean, you might do. Look, if you're in a relationship with a girl, and you might you might pull that out of the bag just for you must just try it for fun, mm-hmm. and then I guarantee you won't enjoy it. <laughs> You'll probably never do it again. But that is something I have heard from women: is these, especially like younger dudes who are watching a lot of pornographic material. They'll try to replicate things they see in porn. And what they don't understand is what I just talked about before, is like, you know, being being confident in what you're doing, being able to read a woman's body language, understanding a woman's body, knowing how it works, right? That's important to be able to do these more sort of extreme or more elaborate or more dominant mm. sexual acts. Let's- because if you don't know what you're doing, either you're gonna hurt yourself or you're going to hurt her or something. It's just going to be super awkward and uncomfortable and not enjoyable. And you're going to make yourself look like a jackass. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about women. Let's talk about women. So what do you think are some things that you, I saw a post by you the other day and then it vanished. It was like a story you had up and then I I couldn't get it again. It was something about women. Maybe you deleted it. Something about women, things that women like that they're afraid to admit, or are there things that you would say women like either in the bedroom or in a boyfriend or, or stuff that they won't tell you, but that they actually really like in a man or in a sexual experience? <sighs> yeah, I mean, publicly, they're not likely to say they like, say, more extreme things. Like, mm. it's very unlikely for, I mean, not so much these days, women tend to a certain class of women tend to be a lot more explicit with what they're into in the bedroom, but those women tend to also be professionally in this industry as well, right? Mm. But the average woman is not going to run around saying, oh, like, I like to be choked. Is that, how common is that? It's a lot more common than you'd think. Really? If a guy knows what he's doing correctly. Because it's, 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 is it role play? Is it no? I mean, correct choking technique is not like you're trying to make someone pass out. Right. Correct choking technique is about restricting like blood flow to the to the head, so it's just a lightheaded kind of euphoric. Oh, okay, of and it's this not, is all consensual yeah. before people get carried away. You know, it's not about 
the windpipe and stopping right. people it's from not about breathing. hurting someone no, it's the complete opposite, <laughs> complete opposite. that's the that's the thing of it like so you can have two people in a you know totally consensual sexual relationship and they can get up to some really freaky kinky stuff and if some a stranger walked in and saw what was going on they would probably call the cops mm. like this this can happen and people can consent to things that are you know rather extreme I mean, that, and I, I would not even consider choking to be one of those extreme things. I'm thinking, talking things even worse than that. Mm -hmm. well, not worse, but more More extreme. detailed. More details than that. <laughs> and it's totally fine. Like, what happens between two people in, in the privacy of their own bedroom isn't anyone else's business. Right. You know. Um, but it's not about hurting anyone else. It's always about giving pleasure. And that's, that's the thing that people get wrong about a lot of say BDSM stuff mm -hmm. is they think it's about pain, but it's really all about pleasure. And it's about the w different ways that people can derive pleasure. Now you hear from men and women seeking advice from you, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. What is the ratio of that? Is oh, it it's, predom guys? it's predominantly men, yes. Okay, if you do hear from women, and, and you're saying you do occasionally, what what, what are they asking you? Uh, they what ask, are their troubles? They ask me how can they be better for their partner? Oh, interesting. Okay, so they're not necessarily struggling with a partner that's doing something wrong or they're looking for like, how can I amp this up? If, so I'll get two kind of, kind of women contacting me. One will be saying, hey, how can I be better in bed for my partner? Mm -hmm. And the other one will be saying, uh, my partner has read your stuff, thank you. That's basically, oh, okay. <laughs> that's basically the other correspondent. I love it. So if she has a problem in the bedroom, she's all, mm. like, she'll go to my stuff and like, subtly direct her partner to it. Interesting. Yeah. Is it mostly single men or married men that you hear from? Most of my customers, clients are single um, or, you know, they're, they're casually dating. So is it mostly then guys who aren't getting enough sex, want to have a more active sex life, want to perfect their skill? Because I always think truthfully, like I, so I got married late. Um, I was very lucky i'm very attracted to my husband we have kept the heat going so i'm but i like remember thinking to myself do i want to get married i was looking around at a lot of married friends none of them were having sex like at all like i mean 10 years 12 years i was like you're not having sex for 10 years like you're not having sex i mean big long stretches of time yep. and i was like oh my god is marriage like killing sex like i don't know if i want to do you know i don't i don't want to sign up for that and i realized a lot of it is you know choosing your partner and, and there's a lot that goes into that and what is the dynamic in the household and what you're talking about about that male dominance and gender roles all of that comes into play in ways that you don't even realize but do you hear from people who aren't having sex in marriage and what do you tell them yeah. i do i do i do also have a bunch of people who are married who've taken my stuff and learned from me and i get people saying things like we just had the best sex of our marriage in like 20 years mm. like 60 year old couples and what is I it that you are you telling giving them technique or are you giving the them guys, more yeah. like lifestyle like it needs to wrap around to your whole life or for the guys it's it's very much like step by step breakdown like technique oh wow I have yeah. to you know what I'm gonna have to pretend this, to be a guy that. get in there and get I'm, I'm curious what you're saying you don't have to pretend, I, wanna, don't well, I mean I'm just so curious <laughs> what is a step by step is it literally like walk into the room do this touch her this way is it very specific the advice yeah. you give yeah some of my, some of my wow. stuff is is really as specific as that yeah. And I, I, cause I, I tried to make my stuff aut autism proof mm. as much as I possibly could. Cause I think that, cause a lot of guys, no, I'm not shitting on autism actually. I think autism is a superpower by the way. Mm. Um, but there's a lot of dudes who approach sex and relationships with women. They, or they find it difficult because they're more like logical, rational right. kind of people. So I'm like, okay, well, how can I teach this guy something that is kind is part technique and part art? in a way like it's about understanding like a, like there's a there's a feel mm -hmm. to being good in the bedroom and having chemistry and connection with somebody that is really hard to kind of pencil in like mathematically step one step two step three right yeah so i will i literally break things down on a spectrum from speaking of spectrum yeah uh from like super super vanilla to like borderline bdsm wow and like i'll, I'll i baby step a dude across that and he can stop we can start wherever he's at and he can go to where he wants to go right mm. where he's com he is comfortable in going which is super important because if mm. he's not comfortable doing it then she sure as hell She's won't be, be comfortable, comfortable with him doing it right but i can baby step a guy across that whole spectrum mm. and he can pick up whatever skills he wants along the way and it's great and then he's got new tools he can add into the bedroom and that's what happens with these people who come to me who are married been in long-term relationship very long-term relationships it's just this injection of new ideas and new not necessarily even new ideas but 
a new way of doing things, which mm. I, again is creating that polarity. Yeah, him being more dominant, her being in her feminine, being more submissive, and, and and really really enjoying that. And then bang, outside the bedroom, all of a sudden she's not nagging. All of a sudden she's not you know whining for the take happy. the trash. She's happy. <laughs> she's satisfied. <laughs> Right. It's like eating a big old meal, you know. Sometimes you just you're hungry. You got to get fed. Just saying. But and and he's and he's also recognizing. Okay, if I step up right. and lead this way in the bedroom, and you know, take charge, tell her what to do, right? Ever, maybe I could also do that outside the bedroom, and it would manifest just as good results as well. So it's like right. I find this is a really good way to teach men how to be more masculine it, it, i don't like the idea of, i don't i don't call myself like a masculinity coach or anything like mm. that i'm just some pervert who knows how to teach you <laughs> like <laughs> teach you to get your rocks off properly but it it explains a lot it's a mm. great example the dynamic is correct and because no woman is like it's a lot easier to fix a bad relationship starting from the bedroom as well Mm. Because if a guy comes, let's say, for example, the the masculine and the feminine polarity is off in a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. She's she's maybe nagging too much. She's being a bit too masculine. She's trying to lead. He's trying to lead. It's conflicting, right? Okay. Now, in the if he tried to fix that relationship, or you know, say, start putting his foot down or whatever, yeah, outside the bedroom, she's she, he's going to run into a lot of resistance, right? Right. Because all of society is telling her, you don't need. No man, you should be independent, strong, independent woman. Right. Right. So he's fighting against all of this outside propaganda, right? By trying to do it outside the bedroom. Inside the bedroom, it's privacy. It's just the two of us. And women will be a lot more in tune with their nature, I think, mm -hmm. in the bedroom than they are outside the bedroom. And so it's a lot easier for you to, to approach a sexual interaction and be like, okay, like as a guy leading it, Telling her, you know, what to do, where to go, do this, do that, like following your instruction, right? Because she wants to, right? Because she's she's enjoying it. She gets off on following your instruction in the bedroom, and then okay, magically outside the bedroom now, oh, this makes like, like in everyone's brain, yeah. I instruct her, she has a good time. I listen to what he does, I have a good time, right? It creates this really easy to understand dynamic now once they're outside the bedroom again. Right. And then you don't have like all the all the propaganda starts to not really right. affect the relationship anymore. How much truth do you think there is to the idea that women need a lot of foreplay and that women won't enjoy a quickie? And because that's said a lot without bringing up my personal experience of trying to be objective and just say like, <laughs> what? how much truth do you think there is to that? Women can enjoy quickies, absolutely. <laughs> like women can be very, it's about the passion, right? It's a, you can be passionate and it can be, you can have great passionate sex and it can be quick. Okay. And it, the emotion of sex is a lot more important for women. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that idea of like, so she might not actually get off, mm -hmm. like re, she might not actually climax and reach orgasm if, mm -hmm. it's a, if it's a quickie. It's a quickie. But it's still a, a, a passionate you exchange, know, exchange like lust filled moment. I can't keep my hands off you, like right. whatever she's still going to enjoy that experience mm -hmm. and have an emotional experience and, and remember that, mm -hmm. right? And One thing, can I tell you something that guys like don't prioritize sometimes that like, when I met my husband, my husband's a great, I'm gonna, my husband's going to kill me by the way, I'm just <laughs> saying all this, but he's a great kisser. He won't care that I said that. He's a great kisser. And women really, the kissing is so important. Because for girls like me, like there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a lot of time spent with a guy before you even approach a bedroom, and that kissing is so intimate. Like a man's kiss has to make me want to go into a bedroom and just be like, ah, oh. like that. The kiss is a lot, and guys sometimes spend so much time thinking about the end game of what's mm. gonna happen in the the bedroom. Like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna seal the deal. I'm gonna do everything right, but. It's a lot of steps before that where like the kiss is like, that's what's gonna make me either wanna get to that end game or be like, oh, I don't think this is the guy for me. The kiss is like the appetizer. Yeah. Right? Or like as you're- But you're, it's not like a salad. It's like some <laughs> shrimp cocktail. It's something yummy. You know what I mean? Like It's <laughs> like when you walk through Walmart or whatever. No, what, not, uh, what's the big one where they get, uh, only Americans have this store. Target? No, we everything's on like pallets and you buy in bulk. Like a Costco? Yeah, Costco. Bam, that's it. 
or an Aldi, right? So it's like it's like when you're going through Costco and they've got the samples of yes. like the cheeses and, and stuff like, like that, mm. and you just keep coming back exactly again and again. That's the what kiss kissing is, is like. Everything, and then you go buy the pallet of cheese or whatever right. that you were interested. Yeah, you gotta in. buy that if the kid and you, yeah. you taste that little piece of cheese, and it's like mm, you're like, I don't need to buy that, you know. But if you taste that little piece of cheese and it's real good, now. Kissing is something that's very, very hard to, t I think, I've at least found it very hard to teach guys how to kiss better. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, it come, I, I would say, in my own words, I'd say it comes down to being passionate. Yes. But a lot of girls will misinterpret that as just like slobbering over a girl and mm -hmm. like giving a million, like their whole tongue or whatever, right? You're not a teenager, mm -hmm. right? So you have to find a balance between like not being a slobbering dog like a t like right. kiss like not kissing like a teenager right while still having that kind of enthusiasm and passion that you might have had when you were like 16 yeah. anyway right and not not half assing the kiss it's, not it's like also a like the touch yeah. like you're giving her a kiss like a the lot. touch that whole commanding presence that we're talking about is like where is your hand is it you know are you in control of that experience did you look at her did you look into her eyes there's so much that goes into a kiss that i feel like people don't spend a lot of time. Like on. that's a, that's a good point. Like the the lead up to a kiss, like mm -hmm. the way you look at a woman before you kiss her, especially right. before you kiss her the first time. It's that everything. that build up of sexual tension, super super key. Yeah. And actually, here's actually I can give guys one really super practical tip on being a better kisser. Hmm. Here it is. Uh, was this camera? All right, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> here's here's how you can have a really long lasting impression as a first kisser. Make sure that you as the man are the one to break it off and, leave, mm. and create that distance. So you're, you're kissing, you're kissing, you're kissing just before, like before you can feel her stop, like, cause most of the time the you know, on a first kiss, especially right. the woman is typically going to disengage first. Right. And then you, as the man, you kind of feel like I want more. You want to get more, right? right? Flip that on its head. Right. So if you, as the man disengage first and create that space, then she is going to want to fill that oh, space. Oh yeah, she's going to be like <laughs> clawing at you in a way. You right. know? Yes, a hundred percent. But that is a hundred. But that that is nothing about technique of right. the kiss. It's That's energy. In, it's energy. It's the emotion you're giving her mm -hmm. in that experience. So that is actually a way to become an infinitely better mm. kisser. Is to want, be the one that breaks it off and creates that space and let her chase you down and then tease you or whatever. Right. Like, I That's always say like fun. women, like when we, things build in us, you know, like if you start a night, the way you look at her, the touch, like we, we need to, if we build, and I'm not saying we have to do that all the time. Like we just had that conversation about a quickie, but if you, if she can build throughout a night, like the end game for her is going to be so much more powerful than if it's just like, boom, guys, I feel like can build very quickly. <laughs> women yeah. take a minute to kind of, everything has to, I feel like everything, all the blood has to circulate as I like to say, <laughs> but it's a powerful thing. If you can get a female to build throughout a night like that, the end of the night. Mm, yeah. Guar like that. basically guaranteed way to get a woman to climax is to tease her into it. Right. Effectively. Like you don't have, it's, there's mechanical things that mm -hmm. absolutely work, yes. Yeah. But as a, a tried and tested way, some women are just a lot easier to make climax than other women. That's just right. a, a fact, right? Yeah. It comes down to a, a bunch of different factors. But in general, if you just start off super, super s slow and build up sexual tension from, you know, prior to the kiss all evening, like you said, and mm -hmm. then eventually, like even when you oh, get yeah. to the bedroom, you, you kind of, you establish that dynamic of making her chase and making mm -hmm. her beg. That is going to change things. Oh, yeah. Totally. So we're going to get the chat. I see you feisty over there. We're going to get to you in just a second. Um, but I want to ask you, you have this experience, obviously, in the adult film industry. And I talk a lot about, you know, I discourage that for women. And I discourage OnlyFans for women. Um, I just don't think that's a good path for women. You know, I, I just don't. But did you notice that? What, what's interesting about you is you've been through that industry. And you seem complete like you don't have any negative I, I don't look at you and see like this guy has been damaged in any way you. you know it's it's honestly <laughs> and it's it's a tough industry it's a very tough industry um but I've met women who have gone through that industry and you can see that there's been scars from it it's just been it's hardened them it's it's done things to them that 
aren't good necessarily. I'm not saying every woman, but it's it's challenging, I think, in different ways. You seem like you are just, you, like you could have been like, I was a banker for 10 years and it would, <laughs> you wouldn't be in the exact same, very kind of healthy. I wouldn't have had as much fun. Sp- exactly. But you know you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't look like you're carrying the weight of a challenging mentally, physically, whatever career. Did you notice that any of the women in the industry f- handled it not quite as well as you? Yeah, they definitely don't handle it. it. It's it's really. I think there's a lot of women in adult entertainment that shouldn't be in it, mm. and I think there's a select handful that should, because they're actually like, they they are, like, perfect for it. Are they like wired like men? In a way, th- those particular women in a way are. There's mm. certain women that I've I've worked with and like they're ge- they're genuinely lean in for maniacs. Like, they n- they have not developed any you know, neuroses or whatever from their experience. Wow. And they don't have any they don't have any desire to start a family or do anything like that. I'm like, this industry is actually perfect for you. But for like the other like 80, 90 percent of girls that get into it, mm-hmm. I like just from, you know, what I what I've seen, the bad experiences I've seen some some of them have and the way they can get a bit more bitter and jaded as they progress through their career. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is, this wasn't correct for wasn't you. Wasn't a good decision. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, I want to get to, and by the way, audience, don't worry if you hear some rustling around. Andres is in here trying to fix one of our some sort of camera angle. I don't know. I'm going to get to the chat while he's doing that. This way, if there's just a ray, nobody notices. Don't worry, Andres, we got your back. Uh, we'll get to the chat, and then we're going to get back to a video. Yeah, it's all good. We're casual here. We keep it casual. We keep it feisty. Russ, thank you for your donation. Um, Oh, look who's in the house. MLD's in the house. Hi, Jed. Thanks for having on my little brother, <laughs> Sterling Cooper. I see that he is copying my tour and beard. Looking great. I actually and love you, brother. did this. I, me and John have accidentally gone on like all the same podcasts. Is that true? And I did it all independently of John. And I'm like, yo, are you going to be in America? He's like, he sent me his schedule. <laughs> He's the same podcast. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. And then he, oh, he came back too. Look. Uh, ask Sterling his opinion on American women and dating <laughs> there. Oh, uh, what do you think? Um, I think in this city, you're you're really hard pressed to find a good woman. Oh yeah. My opinion on America is that you there are lots of good women in America still, but people are looking in the wrong places. Where if should they be looking? People in the are Midwest? fishing. <laughs> they're fishing in the wrong ponds. Yeah, the people, dudes should be dudes should be fishing fishing in places like Kentucky and like Memphis, like. What's it, Tennessee? Like all these places. Seriously, man. Like you're all fishing in the wrong pond. You're all I fishing. I tell them. I you're try fishing to tell in like them. LA and Miami and New York. No wonder you're finding like women who have had a bunch of partners and like have trouble pair bonding. You're in the wrong cities. In the wrong cities. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Like find a lovely like Christian woman from the Midwest and you'll be you'll be happy for the rest of your life. It's See, simple. y'all don't listen to me. They exist. But now that he's saying it, I know you're going to listen, but <laughs> that's that you got to get out of the cities. <laughs> you got to get out of the cities. All right, let's see John Bristol. By the way, we have the the computer on the other side today. It's basically where uh, there's a mess going on here today. So if I'm leaning this way, don't worry. John Bristol, thank you. Afternoon, great conversation so far as always. You know, I love your show, but I won't lie. I liked the old intro music. That's just, <laughs> listen, that's just because you got used to the dancing. Don't worry, you're going to get used to this dancing too, and then you're going to be happy. You should keep the new video montage, but overlay it with the old song. I love when people have something to say about what we're doing. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Don't listen. If you behave in the chat, I'll bring the old music in every now and then as a treat, and I'll do a little dance. Just saying. All right. What's your guys? Joe Men's, what's your guys' opinion on having female friends? Oh, we're going to get to this. I have to hold this, okay, Joe Men's? Um, he's asking about female friends. Recently, since I'm more focused on myself and my work, maintaining those friendships feels like more work to me. I want a smaller circle. So is there a polite way to end things? You know, we could do it now. Female friends for guys, what do you think? Okay, <laughs> but this is a this is actually a, a... There's two ways of answering this question because there's two different kinds of men this applies to. Okay. So there's a select group of dudes who have a bunch of female friends and it adds like it adds status to their life so Mm -hmm. actually a really good example would be someone like michael sartain i don't know if you know who michael is yeah 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 so he for example like he throws big like events fundraisers Mm -hmm. like bikini competitions stuff like that he's got a ton of female friends but there's an equal exchange of value there because they all like his female friends will hook him up with with chicks of like their friend Mm -hmm. their friends right so he he gets on massive access to super super hot women through his social circle of female friends. That situation works out perfectly. It's an equal exchange between the man and the woman as a friend, right? Mm -hmm. That is not the case for 99% of dudes when they have female friends and when they talk about having female friends. It's really not. 99% of the time, it's 
the average dude who is an like what we would call like an orbiter around a woman and he's he secretly wants to like get with her or right. or if she, if he would he would get with her I and mean, I think Fresh and Fit have done tests like this where you, like if He'll a girl call. yeah if the girl texted him, texted him out of the blue and said hey like I'm horny come over he would instantly oh, come yeah. like that Two friendship seconds. would be broken instantly right mm. so it's not it's not friends in the same way that you would be friends with your dudes right like you're just not going to interact together the same way like the the guy ain't going to go like get his nails done at the salon sounds like more of what you're talking about is like a business arrangement honestly like like what you're talking about michael sarton i don't know maybe he's i have to ask no he didn't he's michael sleeping didn't. with a bunch of those women mike tell us the truth not anymore because he's got he's got a girlfriend I'm uh, not okay. gonna, were you <laughs> i'm not gonna salt uh, <laughs> solve his game no but he like he uh, he's genuinely friends with these women yeah you know, buys know, okay. remembers their birthday and stuff like that cool oh, great wow, great okay like and that, but that, but that arrangement works, and that's what I'm saying. Like that is totally different from. Mm. And Michael teaches guys how to do that, by the way, which is you know great. But the average guy, in his interaction with female friends, yeah. it is not that. Yeah. It's a situation of it's in most cases it's really a situation of like him giving her a bunch of his time and attention, sometimes even like his resources, like helping her out and stuff. And what's he getting in return? Just like. Conversation? I, I, no one. <laughs> you want conversation? conversation? Like no one gives a shit. Like really? I don't like one of my fa- like this. Is sound, this will make me sound like a complete asshole. But one of Let's my have it. one of my favorite attributes of, of my girlfriends. F- my favorite attribute. Can you guess what it is? When they're quiet. <laughs> they don't talk. It's my favorite thing. My absolute favorite thing about my girlfriends. Like just don't. If it, it's just quiet. Yes. That's what I want. Sally's nodding. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, all the dudes agreeing with me yeah. here. Well, because <laughs> there are some women we show them on the panel sometimes. <laughs> nag, nag. It could really. Because I don't. Okay, like, honestly, I don't. Like, I will sit around with my boys and talk about, like, philosophy mm. and business and politics. I don't want to talk about any of that stuff with my. I'll talk about it with you. you know, mm-hmm. But I don't want to talk about that with my girlfriend. I, yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Because I'm not going to be able to have that same kind of, like, super in depth like intellectual conversation typically with mm-hmm. with most women than I would have with my boys especially mm-hmm. because of the guys I hang around with right right so for me I just want my women to be you know polite and feminine and dainty and lovely and That's cute interesting I love mm. that I love them when they just don't talk mm. that makes them love, makes me love them more <laughs> <laughs> it really does. that may be the quote of the day <laughs> I love them when they don't talk but they but then but I'm not it's not like I'm not telling them to do that mm-hmm. by yeah. the way like like it's just a byproduct of the kind of women of, of like the green flags I'm selecting for. Right. Yeah. Magically, it's also like the they get it's the dynamic. They get it. They're like, right. oh, he's had a he's he's been working his ass off all day. Cool. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna come home. I'll come over. I'll cook him some food or whatever. Mm-hmm. We'll sit there. We'll just I'm just chilling on the couch with the Netflix. Yeah. Great. We can we can cuddle him. We can snuggle. We can be all lovey dovey. Great. Yeah. It's interesting too when women are really happy. You know, people see me all the time in front of the mic, and I'm this person. And at home, I'm, I'm very quiet, and it's funny. PBD and I, Patrick, Pat, David, and I always talk, and I'm always like, you know, he's a, we're always joking because I'm not social. Like, when we go to a gathering, you don't hear me speak. I just, I'm content to just kind of observe. And the first few times my husband and I went out, he had a lot more friends. I was, I have a very small circle of friends, and I would go out, and I would just kind of sit at the table, and they'd be like, is she, can she speak? And I'd be like, no, I'm good. Like, I don't need, I was really happy, and, and he'll always joke with me. He'll be like, you just, you don't need a lot of that. And I say, you know, at work, it's different. I'm analyzing issues. I feel like I'm into politics, all that. I sit for an hour, but in my relationship, like I'm good for him to just like figure it out. And I just, if I'm at peace listening, like just put some sunshine on my face or my feet in the grass, I'm good. Like (laughs) I'm really good, you know? So there are women that feel that way as well, I know. I wanna ask you, okay, we're gonna shift here. I see the chat building up. Okay, we're gonna turn the chat by the way, 10 and up, just because y'all are feisty. $10 $10 and up for me to read. You can chat in there for as much as you want, but I, you know, I gotta get to the other topics. I'm worried about what's happening to men. Um, not just in this country, but across the world. I'm worried about what's happening to their bodies. I see images of the dad bod. You know, now we're being told this is attractive to women. It's not. It's also not healthy. It's also not going to be a sign that a guy is able to take care of his family. I mean, this is really going in a very bad direction. And I pulled this tweet. Delhi, we're at number four. La Sierra High School had a gym class in 1962. And I just want to show it. We're going to show it without the volume because I don't know what type of, you know. Oh, yeah. These British Path videos, they're really good. It's, it's insane. You can play it, Deli. 
and we're going to show it without volume so we can comment over it. But if you see what's going on here, I mean, these are young guys. These are high school guys. Look at what they're capable of doing. Yep. I mean, it's absolutely insane. So when we talk about, you know, women have changed over the years and I'm often saying, well, they're, you know, less feminine and because they're immersed in the workforce, they're getting hardened and this, that men have changed a lot too. And some of it is not for the better. How many guys do you know? Well, you, you're different. You're in a different circle. You're in like the war room circle. But if you look at your average guy went to your average high school, forget it. Yeah. We can, we're good, Deli. We I mean, ask, like I did my high school didn't do that. No, my, and, and mine didn't as well. And that's a that's an extreme example because I think it was a veteran that taught there. Um, I, I believe there's a story behind La Sierra High School. But yeah, even back in the day, you know, still, you didn't look around at a beach. You can see beach pictures from the 1970s yeah. and you're not looking at a flood of obese people. And, you know, most guys I look at are sedated in some way. Alcohol, drugs, whatever it may be, the vaping is constant in Miami on a regular basis. They're overweight. They don't go to the gym. They're sitting in front of video games. And as a female, that's scary to me because I always say I need men, healthy, strong men to be the front, front on the front lines of defense against all the bad stuff that's coming our way. Mm. And when you see, I mean, do you, do you see, I know you're in a particular circle with guys that care about this stuff, but do you try to spread that message of just like, we need you to be more than what you are right now. Like you need to step it up for everyone. Do you spread that message? I mean, I, I spread the message that you need to be able to protect and defend your loved ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think everyone is deserving of your, you know, your your protection and your provisioning. Mm -hmm. I think those you care about are, mm -hmm. um, particularly right now because we can get into politics now. But the the governments of the world really don't give a shit about you. Yeah, that's true. So, okay, well, why do I give a shit about them? Why am I no, doing No, I mean, like, within, yeah. a, within a community. Within Say a, you live absolutely. in a community, absolutely. and maybe yes. it's not your direct family, but it's your neighbor. It's your, like, I want to see a world where men look around, and if something bad was going to come, those guys gather together and say, end of game, end of story, game over. We will fight, if need be, to protect the women, the children, our community, our land, our homes, et cetera. Yep. I, do, I just don't feel that, particularly coming off the last two years. There's too many guys with tr double and triple face diapers walking around. It's just not, it, I, I can't. It's scary. Yeah. Um, that starts with family. Like com Communities like that start from the, the, the family unit. Yeah. And they branch out from that, right? So you've got to reinstate this. Uh, this. The reason we're not seeing much of it is because guys have been disincentivized to build families in the first place. Look at right. all, Where is the incentive for the average man today to get married and have kids? In America, at least, mm -hmm. like the incentives are backwards mm -hmm. in terms of You're talking like, about divorce. And I'm talking about divorce rates. I'm talking about uh, you know child like women literally being incentivized to, to like monetarily incentivized to divorce a man and, and make yeah. him pay child support. That's that's backwards, right? right? That does, that's not conducive to families, mm -hmm. right? You, the pool of women that men have to select from today, and I'm not trying to shit on women, but like you know, compare. I think there was a, there was a great four uh, chan screenshot I've seen before, which was like men today have to uh, work twice as five times as hard for women who are like, you know, one fifth as good as their grandmothers were, mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. right? Which is pretty accurate. Like you look at like my grandma, like how amazing she was compared to the average American woman today. And again, I think that's mostly in big cities. I don't mm -hmm. think that's the case when you go to like rural America, Midwest America, Agreed. I think that's still fine. But compare what, what she's sort of expecting Right versus what my grandma was expecting or whatever, she lived a she lived a fa simple farm life, milking cows and stuff. Like mm -hmm. she was happy and she raised kids and was super like genuinely happy to the end of her days. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what do guys have to do to get that now? Prior, I, I have this opinion, and I believe you would agree with me. I think if you took the average baby boomer mm -hmm. man from like I think ninety nine percent of those, if you took them and you put them in today's world, they would be incels. Oh yeah, because none of them had to learn. Like now, do to, for a guy to just get a woman, he has to. The criteria of what he has to do to to be above average basically is a lot. Like he has to, it's, it's, and forget just being in shape. Like he has to uh, earn an above average income. Mm -hmm. He has to be able to present himself very well on social media and dating apps to get attention in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right? Has to be somebody of status and value and net worth and network to actually draw attention and have influence yep. that women are going to pay attention to, right? And so all this, okay, it's going against dudes 
is it oppositely incentivizes incentivizing them in the wrong direction mm. to settle down and get get in relationships and get married and stuff. So I understand why that's the case. Yep. Do I believe that dudes should be trying to find good women and have families? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, they should because I think they'll be happier. Yeah. Everyone, everyone will be much, much happier that way. But uh, I've kind of gone on a tan- tangent. I've forgotten your original question. No, no. <laughs> I think I, I'm glad you went on a tangent because it's important to, to kind of just let these conversations sometimes flow. And I, I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, and I, I, I know, you know, when I have guys sit down here, it's so funny. They'll often, you know, caveat the way you, I'm not trying to shit on women. Like they say that because I know, I know that you, you all know that there's someone waiting to just pull that. And, oh, he hates women, blah, blah, blah. And I get it too. But you know, you have to, there are still a lot of, I always say there's a lot of good women out there and we're tired too of these women behaving badly. Like we're, we're done with you. You know, we've been dealing with you for a long time and I'm always like telling these guys, get out of the cities, go, you know, find a girl who still prioritizes, you know, has a, some sense of commitment to religion, has some sense of commitment to family, has her values intact. They exist. And you know who irritates the hell out of those girls? These girls in the cities that are like, oh, my body count is 75 and I'm 23. Ha ha. You know, it's irritating because it it's like a stain on the whole gender. So I'm happy to call them out. I think it's easier for me to call them out than you for a number of reasons, <laughs> uh, mostly because I'm, fi- I'm female. I want to ask you about women with male friends. We talked about it the other way around. We have a clip from Fresh and Fit that's interesting to me. Um, Deli number five. Let's play that. 3945. Oh, really? Oh, you do? She belongs to the street. Red flag. Listen, whoever says that a woman cannot have male friends is very insecure. Stop the cat. Deeply, super, very insecure. Tell us how. Because he doesn't want his woman to be surrounded by any male energy because he has a small fucking dick. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> so you want big dicks around you then? That's not it. Um, <laughs> I just naturally, I just feel better with men around me. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to make fun of this. Um, but I'm just, I can be better friends with guys than girls because it's less drama. It's less talking about your back. It's just literally friendship. Straightforward, nothing. Same. Okay, nothing else. so let's break so down what she's prefer- saying. Let's break down what she's saying. She, he goes on and on, talks a little bit about what we talked about before. Is it a red flag if she has male friends? So what women will typically have is what I just described in the previous example, right? Was with it, She's going to have dudes around her who she thinks is are her friends, but they all just want to sleep with her, mm-hmm. right? Maybe not all of them, but like 90% of the dudes mm-hmm. that are in her friendship circle are going to want to sleep with her if the, if the opportunity ever presented itself. They would throw that friendship in the Happens toilet real all fast. The time. <laughs> and this is actually a problem with the dudes, if I'm being honest, because like, okay, let's say guys will... One, guys will prioritize like female companionship not every, like the kind of kind of men that we have a problem with right mm-hmm. will prioritize prioritize female companionship as in aka sex over like male brotherhood mm-hmm. so they'll stab their brothers in the back they'll talk shit about their their, their boys like even in the club to like a complete stranger mm-hmm. they'll shit on their friend to try and get with her over her over their friend right mm-hmm. this kind of energy is just weaselly yeah and you see a lot of that when you have women with like a ton of male friends around them. It's just it's just these weaselly dudes trying to like mm-hmm. get one up on over each other to try and get her attention. Or of course she yeah. likes having a bunch of male friends because it gets all this attention. Of course right. she does. It's also sometimes like a, a bunch of backups, right? You know, it's she's all got, <laughs> oh, she gets into fight with the girl with the guy oh. she really likes. And then it's like, oh, I got these five guys over here and I can go and cry to them and, and they'll rub my head and they'll take me out to lunch and they'll tell me how beautiful I am and all that. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, you're a constant ego boost coming your way. And maybe she's aware of this consciously or not, but either way, her having all these male friends around her is like a weapon that she can utilize against her boyfriend Mm -hmm. in the form of jealousy. Power play. It's a massive power play. It's totally Mm -hmm. power play. And you see what she, like the immediate response out of her asking this question, this is how I know that that woman doesn't actually think for herself for Mm -hmm. a start, because what's her default response? Sign language. Uh, Shaming, insults, uh, guilt, and the need to be right. Yeah, that is the default. I think it was Kevin Samuel to coin that, mm-hmm. by the way. But that's default. What these kind of women will go to if a dude puts down any kind of boundary that she's like that mm-hmm. makes her responsible or makes her actually like she feels like she can't have her cake and eat it too. Right. The moment there's a boundary put down, oh, you got a small dick. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, what a coincidence that all the guys, <laughs> right, that right. all the men that have standards have tiny penises. I didn't know that. That's an astounding, it's like, that's amazing, that coincidence. Yeah. But and but I, the, I, I guess all the big dick guys must just let their women do whatever the hell they like. Right, I, I, right. By, by correlation, <laughs> right? Right. So it, uh, the only way that I think it works, you know, if once you get once as a female, once you get married, you're in a relationship. I think the only way the male friend works, if it's a friend of both of you, yeah, right? It's yeah. a friend you see together. It becomes a family friend. It becomes somebody that you don't spend individual time with that guy. Yeah. You're not spending private phone conversations, private dinners. But if the three of you share that or four of you, maybe he's got somebody he's dating and it becomes something that you're doing together. And it's like you're boyfriend husband has his own individual relationship with that guy it's a different thing i think when yeah, it happens like, that yeah, way group interactions like that cool yeah but like yeah, one-on-one one, one on one kind of interactions is a bit shady right oh to from, me from i would example, like, right? no way if i were a dude because you know what that's about and by the way there are, people are always saying oh guys are creeping guys are creeping let me tell you there's a lot of women that they got that backup all she needs is to have one big fight with her boyfriend and then the backup is there and they go to a coffee, leaning on the shoulder. One thing leads to another. It, yep. It's not just the guys that are creeping. I'm going to give you a really good example, actually, because a guy in a guy hit me up um, just yesterday, actually, with this question. with a very similar scenario. So his scenario was his, uh, his girl was being kind of like bugged by a guy at her work. She was telling him, she was telling her boyfriend this, right? Mm. That, oh, this guy keeps hitting on me at work. I keep telling him to... to you know, go away, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he hit me up. He'd, he'd already responded to her and he sent me the screenshot of, of what, screenshots of what he'd said to her and he was asking me for advice. And he'd responded with something like, um, oh, I don't I, I don't like that. What was exactly the way he said it? He's something like, I don't like um, that you're getting this energy from him um, because my last girl said that there was nothing wrong no, there was nothing happening happening between her and her friend at work, and then she slept on she slept with him behind my back, something like mm. that. He got cheated on. He told her basically that his last girlfriend cheated on him with a friend from work. A friend from work. Synopsis. Okay, terrible idea <laughs> on his on his half yeah. to reveal that insecurity. Right. Really. Of course. He's just given her a weapon. <laughs> of course. That she is now going to use against him later on to poke at him and make him jealous. Anytime she has an argument with him, anytime yep. he upsets her, anytime anything, anything better. Oh, really? So and so at work was say, said my hair was nice today, or whatever, right? All right. But, oh, you don't like that about me? That's so funny because John says that that's like one of my biggest assets. That's so weird that you guys think differently about that. But <laughs> here's what I broke down for this guy as well. This this example, she he he actually said to me, "Do you think this is a problem? Do you think there's anything going on here?" And I said to him. She, if there was something going on between her and the guy she was working with, she wouldn't have told you about it in the first place. Right. She would have kept that shit a secret. That's right. But because she told you about it, here's what it tells you. She's trying to make you jealous. Mm -hmm. She's trying to use that as a weapon against you. Yep. Now, I'm not saying she's doing this consciously, like you know, meticulously planning out what she's going to do. It's just female nature. It's, oh, I it's think a lot of women default. do it consciously. Sure, there's ones that do it consciously. But in that, maybe mm -hmm. she did. She was Ukrainian. Maybe she did. I don't know. They're kind of, <laughs> they're kind of feisty like that. <laughs> but women women know what they're doing a lot of the times. You know, that that's a thing that people say. And they'll say. pretend like they don't. They pretend like they don't. And it's like, oh, women can do no wrong. Women know. When they do sneaky stuff or when they do stuff to make men jealous. When women do stuff to make men jealous, we know. Yeah. We but know I exactly think that's a, it was a really good example that happened yesterday so, of like, him thinking right. the fact that she brought it to you in the first place yep. tells you it wasn't actually happening mm -hmm. and she was just she was using it to test you to see if you're going to react to it and you did unfortunately and you did so it's like, I think that's actually a really good example for guys on this kind of topic I'm going to skip six because <clears throat> we touched on it already Deli I'm going to go to seven can we pull up that Twitter please uh, it's a video let's play it and then we'll get back to the chat no that's <laughs> your yeah, we need seven. We need the feminism. Uh, we need the tw the tweet. You see it? Yeah, that one. Okay, this is it. Now you heard about. I haven't seen this, but I, think okay. I could already have an idea. No, no, this is different than you think it's gonna be. This is this is too much. Okay, let's play. She's lifting. I thought she was naked, by the way. It's apparently does the color of her leggings. It is what it is. Ugh. Oh, girlfriend got stuck. Bail out. Just, just bail. She got stuck. She didn't want to throw it. 
So now she's trying to get guys to come over and help her to lift that thing off her back. <laughs> right now, this goes on. Look, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just she's bail. just sitting there. Just, just throw bail it out. Right just throw it. She was afraid to do that. And I'm not going to lie. I might be afraid to do it, too, because a lot of weight. And I'd be like, shit, is this yeah. thing going to hit me in the behind? What's yeah. going to go on? She stays there. She stays there. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, you can't stay there all day, girlfriend. Stays there. It's too much, right? You know this? <laughs> Does anyone actually help her? Oh, yeah. You know who helps her? A, a female. Uh, a she, female comes she pissed over. About her, yeah. Yeah, so a girl, ultimately what happens is, if you scroll through, I don't know, Del, if you want to scroll through, but ultimately what happens is a girl comes over. She's yeah, sitting yeah, there for like go, a minute. Whips it <laughs> off her back. She's like, hey, hey, hey. Now, granted, guys have earbuds, but you will see that the girl comes over and helps her. First of all, girlfriend, why are you lifting all that weight? That's too much weight for you. You need to know your limits. That's number one. But here's the thing that struck me is this, because we've been seeing all these images of girls in the gym where, you know, half naked, booby out, booty out, and then a guy, like, has the nerve to look her way. And it's like, oh, my God, he makes me feel so unsafe, all that stuff. But now you have a dynamic where, this instance, you have women in the gym, and I guarantee you there are guys that saw what was going on and were like, I'm staying out of this. I don't want to be in some video. I'm not getting involved. Yeah, I don't want to be... the trap up with the phone recording. I don't want to be accused of what I'm doing, that I'm approaching her, all that and this is what I say about like feminism wrecking men because your natural instinct as a man would just be like, let me go over and help this woman, yeah. right? Normal. Like Back in my dad's day, you wouldn't even think about that. He would have gone over. He would have been like, oh, you got to be careful, honey. Don't lift stuff that's so heavy. Let me help you out. You got to be afraid to do everything now. And I think that's why when people say the death of gentlemen and all this, women complain. I saw a video of a very prominent female figure being like, oh, all the good men are gone. All the good men. It's like, well... You, you killed them. You killed whatever was inside of them that would have made them actually act like men. Guys are afraid to be men. Yeah. Feminism has disincentivized men from being gentlemen. Completely. It's all backwards. It's all backwards. Can we fix it? Um, yes. Yes, you, don't, you totally can fix it. How do you fix it, though? Even if you fix, even if you give advice to men, get them back on the right track, if women are getting what they're getting, fed to them, spoon fed to them all day long, is that dynamic ever going to get fixed? Well, okay, the, the solution from, from, from the man's perspective is you ignore those women and you pursue the ones that are actually acting feminine and like women again. You just, you mm -hmm. have to delegate, your attention is valuable. So, okay, I only give attention and I'm only a gentleman to the women that deserve to be a gentleman to. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's, it, that's... Does that work if in guys... A long, in, on, on a societal level, if every dude started acting that way, if men actually started opening the doors for like, you know... Women who deserved it. Women who deserved it. I mean, look, it's hard to tell if a woman deserves it just by looking at her, I suppose. Right. But in general, if men were, were more gentlemanly and more chivalric, like the classical examples you might think of, towards the women who actually deserved it, I think women would start... Mm. You know, acting a bit more feminine and stuff. But that goes both ways. Like, women are the gatekeepers towards, like, men. Women incentivize men's behavior. Mm -hmm. Women through sex. So, okay, when you lower the barrier to entry for sex in right. general, okay, what's the guy need to do to get sex? Okay, nothing. Like, not really <laughs> that much anymore. Like, he, he used to have to, like, give you, like, eight goats and stuff. Right. And, and you know, give that Pick to you your up at the father, house, shake like, your dad's <laughs> hand. All this stuff. Be scared of the dad in the house. Yes, there I was saw, layers deep. I saw, I couldn't find the tweet again, but I saw this tweet about a woman who, uh, so this woman had an idea for a dating app. Mm -hmm. And the idea was you have to, um, dating app where you match, and then the dude has to come around to your house and meet your father. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, great start, but you have to add one more layer to that. Your father has to be able to veto the dude mm -hmm. if you like him. If you don't like him, oh, if, sorry, if you like him, your dad's like, he's a, Terrible choice. <laughs> veto. 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 Immediate veto. <laughs> oh man, my because, dad would have vetoed my college choice. Right, I'm not because lie. and that's an, that's another big thing that's happened is we've taken up like fathers are shamed for having mm -hmm. an influence on their daughter's dating life, mm -hmm. which is totally backwards. Because they're strong, empowered women. You didn't get the message. But the idea, like, who knows more about about men? No, I'm with you. The 18 year old girl who is you know following her emotions and can in you know, flights of fancy, mm -hmm. right? Or her like 50 year old dad who spent his whole life doing business with men playing sports with men engaging right. to, engaging male with men all, all mm -hmm. he's like he knows which of his male friends are complete players and playboys right. and they're the ones who are you know committed husbands or whatever he's gonna have a pretty b good indication of this guy's a player or this guy mm -hmm. actually might be like husband yeah. material but that's that's 
toxic masculinity or whatever. Yeah, we can't we can't any... possibly have fathers taking care of their daughters anymore. Oh, heaven forbid that. No, no, no. Can't have that at all. <laughs> all right. Some chats. Brandon R. Uh, my wife and I were each other's firsts due to various issues, including my failing as a man. We haven't gotten to a healthy place in the bedroom. Do you think that can be fixed after years of failing? Mm. Sterling. Absolutely, it can. Can um, be fixed, he's saying. It can be fixed, man. It's hard. It's hard. Um, one of the, the paradoxes that, like, as a man especially, you get... Actually, I think I'd, I'd probably say as a man exclusively, actually, if I say this. You get better in the bedroom by having more experience with different women. Mm. So you'll be, you'll be able to... If you had a lot of experience with previous partners, you would be able to please your wife pretty, pretty consistently, pretty easily, I would imagine. Mm. Versus, okay, if you've only been with your partner, okay... Pros and cons. The pros are there's only one body to learn. Like you only have one, right. you know. That's that true. You if you just have to figure out her body, her not body. every woman's body, <laughs> right? Or the way things that make her, you know, get off in her head or whatever. Right. But at the same time, you don't really know where, what you're dealing with. You don't really know where to start, right? Mm-hmm. So for, I'd say come learn from me, man. Like I literally try to download my perverted brain into yours so mm-hmm. you know <laughs> you've got like – Porn star level like experience in the bedroom. My perverted with, with, brain. Without the sinning. None of the sin, all there the fun, go. right? None of the sin, all the there knowledge. You there you go. All right. Glenn said, Sterling, bro, as a former youth pastor, church women are not a safer option, bro. Trust me, I know, been there, I done wouldn't, that. I didn't say, I didn't necessarily say church as a Christian. Yeah, and also. There's a difference, but I, I, I understand exactly what he's you're saying. He's talking about like the Catholic school girls that. You know. Dude, I love Catholic girls for that reason. And by the uh, way, I, I went to Catholic school, so I know exactly what he's talking about. But I still Ooh, feel boy. comfortable saying that you are still, yes, there will be outliers. That will happen. But you still are making a, a safer bet for yourself getting out of the city and going into the country. Yeah, no question. Yeah, your, odd, you. your odds, your are, odds. Your odds yep. are significantly better. In your yes, fa- you're yes. going to find, of course, there's going to be girls who are sort of a bit Especially with everywhere. social media being what it is. They're course, everywhere is the bottom course. line. Yeah. Uh, another one, I disagree with that. This is two-bit user. I disagree that smaller towns or southern states are safer. They have the same access to IG in the global sexual marketplace. Again, though, w- here's the difference Your for odds me. are still better. Statistically, your odds are still better. The difference for me is that, yes, that's true, but the values and the sense of community in those places is stronger. Sense of and family. oftentimes the sense of family, things like parental rights, things that bleed into school, what those kids learn at school, that, that develops them into who they are as an adult, all of that stuff that whole network is just stronger um and more value-based so i I would i still feel very comfortable saying i would i if um, i have a a son i would my advice to him will be get out of this do not date a city girl (laughs) that's my (laughs) advice all right uh the rational male put a couple in here let's see 10 bucks i have lots of female friends oh this is a quote from mike sartain i have lots of female friends i sleep with my female friends but they're still my friends lol mike sartain that's what i want to know from mike you know know. okay so when i was in the adult industry i had loads of female friends but we'd all worked together You worked together. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot. How do you, oh my God, I just don't understand what is going on in the world. Let me just make myself sound like a relic just one more time. I don't understand these people are seeing other people naked. And then they're just going back to just like, oh, hey, what's up? I don't understand. This you mean is, like, the, like the mic guy? Is or there the, not the something that guy? just like clicks on in your brain when you see somebody, like something doesn't happen in your gut as a female. You saw somebody naked. You had an intimate moment with them and now things are different. I am a, I'm a relic. I'm a relic. No, you're a, pro- you're a product of your life. You're a product of your experience. And you're product Man, of, product my of parents life. did something right. But exactly. I would agree. They did something right. God. Yeah. And it uh, might, I might sound like a complete total hypocrite to say, to like have double standards between like men and women in porn in, in the yeah. pornographic industry, but life's double standards. There you go. Like, <laughs> there you <laughs> literally go. everything is double standards between the sexes. Rolo, rational male. Jed will fly out to Las Vegas and put you on with the girls on Access Vegas and you, you can ask them anything totally you like you in. Sure thing. Sure thing. In fact, it's funny. I was telling uh, Delhi that the Whatever podcast they, Brian's always like, come on. And I'm like, can you imagine me sitting next to these modern women? I would just be like, honey, sit back for a second. I, I want to see tell those. You what's up. MLD was on there this week and we covered it and it like blew up because it was it was the funniest, truly some of the funniest stuff we had seen in a long time. John loves roasting women like that. He absolutely he oh, has man. a perverse pleasure in roasting oh, man. women. 
John Bristol, <laughs> 20 bucks. This question for both of you. On average, do women prefer men with or without facial hair? I read that clean shaven guys subconsciously come off as more trustworthy because you're not hiding part of your face. Okay, I'm going to tell you straight up, John, I can only give you my opinion. I can't make a generalization. I like facial hair. I like a guy who looks scruffy. I like a guy who looks lived in. If you're too clean cut for me, that means that you're probably getting a manicure along with me and I can't have that. So. <laughs> I have a theory on on uh, beards specifically, like a like, full on beard. Yeah, let's say a beard. You got the facial I hair. Like, don't my have husband's a beard. got facial hair. Like I don't you. have a beard though. But in general, right? If let's say you, I'm I'm talking like caveman days. Right? Okay. Let's say you had a you have a beard that kind of covers your face. Here's my theory as to why that would be attractive to women. It's because it hides your emotions as a man. Oh, so you're more stoic. You're more stoic mm. by default if you have a beard. See, I'm going to tell you straight up the beard. Like the full on beard. You know, we see a long ass beard. Sometimes I get a little like, how do you, are you cleaning that properly? Is there food getting in there? All sorts of not, no. Yeah. Okay, so the beard for me, I like, see what, you, what he's got going on right now. It's kind of what my husband has, the facial. He looks a little scruffy, a little like, you know, I don't want all this like clean. In fact, I will tell you, we see all the pictures of Tate right now. You see how Tate in prison, this is obviously not something he's doing because he wants to be doing it. This guy's going through, I don't know what over there. But he comes out and he's got the facial hair. And my one positive comment was like, that's a good look for him. Because, I, you know, he, he looks like he's taken on the system. You know, there's a, I think the facial hair sometimes with guys makes you look more, a little bit more rough. And for me, that's always a plus. Deli's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the UK Economist, this is the last one of this. Oh, no, we got one more. Okay. Why would men risk their lives to protect communities when divorce and family laws are against them when most men are taught they're predators? They are predators by woke and Me Too culture. Why would men protect strangers? We said that before. Excellent. You got you got to learn to stop listening to that crap too. Okay? Like, it's not easy though. You, you, cause it's so e but it's so easy to be just inundated with negative news. Yeah. And all this anti man propaganda. Yeah. You know, anti family propaganda. Right. Everything. You have the choice to just put your phone away mm -hmm. and not listen to any of that crap or and you surround could yourself with with good people. Who think like you? Who have the same world worldview as you? Have well, you know, have good bar good values and morals, yep. and selectively, okay. If you want to interact with the world and learn what's actually going on, there's select news sources you can go to for that as right. well, which are not going to try and brainwash you constantly. Also, you could just be somebody who's not so easily brainwashed, right? Like, get a good head on your shoulders. Learn how to be a free thinking person. Learn how to, I mean, be a citizen journalist. Learn how to sift through media. Okay, this is garbage. Do your own research. You don't just read uh, an article about a documentary, you go watch it. Was it a documentary? Was it not? Do your own reason. People are lazy. Yeah. By and large, people are very, very lazy. And they, it's easier to just buy the story and regurgitate the story than it is to do their own research. True. And that's an unfortunate reality. Okay, I like this. This is number eight. That The one you pulled before, Deli, um, you almost pulled it. It was the one you pulled by accident. Okay, so this I title, Are You Married to a Brat? This is a gender reveal party. The guy's given the balloon, and this is how it plays out. And I just want you to listen to how she speaks to him and address that. So bottom line, what happened in this clip is he had the balloon. He pretended that he was, yeah. oh, I lost it. But do you see her reaction? Ah, oh, this is what I mean. He's effing dumb. He's that dumb. My husband's a moron. And then she's like, oh. So talk to me about a relationship. Because I, I hear from a lot of guys that say I, I'm spoken to in, in a way from the girl I'm dating or, you know, this girl is just disrespectful to me. What what should a man do who finds himself in a situation not, like that? Not date her in the first place. What if he falls in, <laughs> okay, she's, in that she's situation. behaving, what if she's behaving? You know how it is. Women behave for a certain period of time and then the attitude comes out sometimes. What what is what does guy do? Okay, this is actually a good example. Because I had I talked to a I had a friend ask me this exact question. He had a girlfriend who's been acting up and like No, okay, okay good example. So he was he's dating a girl has been seeing her on and off for mm -hmm. several years and he mm -hmm. sort of breaks up with her periodically mm -hmm. and then three months later he'll text her hey baby how you doing whatever and they'll get back together again and then they'll break up again and i'm like okay what happened why does it break what do you break up what happens when you break up like why are you breaking up with her in the first place and he's like oh she'll get dramatic about this dramatic about that whatever mm -hmm. i'm like okay well, 
first of all, you just taught or you've by taking her back again and again and again, you've taught her that she can act like a dickhead. Yep. And get taken back. Mm -hmm. uh, she just has to wait like a couple, couple of months and you'll text her. Yep. <laughs> right? Just not giving your attention to bratty behavior can correct bratty behavior. It's what you do with kids. So what do you? What does that mean? Does that mean ignore her? Does that yeah. mean tell her straight up? I don't like the way you're speaking to me. Well, for, like first step is be like, yo, cut that shit out. Mm -hmm. Like there has to be a boundary. I you, agree. you don't have a if you don't have boundaries, you don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. That's not a relationship. If there's no boundaries whatsoever between the way you interact with each other, then that ain't a relationship. So the guys guys don't put down boundaries these days because they're afraid of looking like a, a misogynist or toxically masculine or whatever the hell buzzword people want to throw at them these days but guys need to put boundaries down your father puts boundaries down for you as a child for a reason mm -hmm. to to like guide your behavior into a positive direction mm -hmm. where it's harmonious right same thing works in relationships so you should be telling your woman like if because they're going to act up cool they're going to they're going to test you like i said Okay, that's not acceptable, babe. Don't mm -hmm. do that again. Mm -hmm. And if she does it again, you have to break it up. You have to be a man of your word and, and follow through, right? I had, I had that with one of my, with one of my girls recently. She, she did something I didn't like. I said, that's unacceptable. She tried to snark back with some bullshit. I said, that's a shame. We would have made a beautiful family together. And I just <laughs> and I ghosted it. You ghosted it? And then, no, lo and behold, three days later, she texted me back. How you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, really? Now you want to mm -hmm. talk again? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Like, but she humbled. She had to humble herself. Mm -hmm. That's the point. You have to. It, this this sounds. It's going to sound manipulative and bad or whatever the hell. Women do this to dudes all the time. By yeah. the way, and oh, it's yeah, only for sure. unacceptable. For some reason, it's only unacceptable for guys to have boundaries. But mm -hmm. women do this to dudes day in day out constantly. Yeah. But you have to be able to put boundaries down and enforce those boundaries. Take away attention from her when she's not acting correctly, so she can learn. And she has to, to learn to humble herself. Mm -hmm. For you. Do you know how many people you you triggered in the woke community? Just I was listening to this. Hopefully, I, all I was of like, them. I, I was going to start to make a list, and it was getting too long. I was like, <laughs> I can't. Just the number of people that between you comparing the husband to the dad, and then saying what the dad taught her when she. I was like, oh man, he. You could just blow up. You could like if there was like a woke club, they would all have just set themselves on fire listening to what you said. Good. But I'll, I will say with that situation too. I mean, she's pregnant. Like you can't tell me that she hasn't done that before. He she, knows exactly yeah. who. He's with. Totally. He allowed that to happen for too long, yeah. and now she feels that she can publicly humiliate him. Yeah, yeah. So I agree. I mean, if you're if you're dating a girl and she's disrespectful, you got to straight up be like, I'm not going to tolerate that behavior soon in the beginning. Because if you don't, forget it. Then it's going to escalate to that type of thing. You're at a gender reveal party, and she's screaming at you in front of your whole family. That's yeah. ridiculous. You got to be you got to be able to have under you got to be able to have uncomfortable conversations as a man. Mm -hmm. This applies to everything, by the way, like in business and friendships, right. whatever. But in relationships too, you got to be like, because uh, most guys are like, uh, if I say this, it might piss her off, and then I don't get sex. Mm -hmm. That's really the, the thought that goes on in their because head. Because they use that as a power as a power trip. Oh, but, you're not going to get some. I'm going to turn over on my side of the bed, and yeah. I'm not going to look your way. Mm -hmm. But and that's because oh, yeah. because the guy doesn't have options. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm not necessarily saying go out and cheat on your girlfriend or whatever. Fine, if you don't, if you want to remain monogamous and loyal, good for you. Like I hope you enjoy that, but. Mm -hmm. Part of one part of the reason why I'm, I'm able to actually enforce boundaries in my relationships is because my my girls know that I have options. Mm -hmm. They're like, mm, he's probably just going to replace my ass mm -hmm. if I act like a dick. That gets trickier if you are in a situation where you are monogamous, you're married to someone. But I think true. I think true the like the energy though that if she knows you're not going to tolerate that, and she knows that you could act on that, but you could go out and there'd be a bunch of girls willing to be nice to you and you had that option, even if you were married and she knew and even the, if, you know that you, you were monogamous, you were just the idea that you're with a man that does have the ability to do that will set you straight real quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, okay. it's, it's really not that complicated and guys will, if you're having, if you're having any kind of frustrations in your life, this guy applies to men and women. If there's anything that frustrates you, be it, financially mm -hmm. in relationships whatever it's because you have an incorrect view of the way the world works mm -hmm. your mental model of oh this is how women are <laughs> is fundamentally wrong mm -hmm. if your results aren't what you expect them to be mm -hmm. it's really it's a simple hypothesis to test to mm -hmm. test like do women respond well when i do this yes or no right if, okay, if it's a no, then I need to adjust my model of what women right. respond well to. 
that applies right. to everything. So, pe- you know, a guy like this, he's probably been taught his whole life because we've all been taught like this our whole life as men from from day one through Disney movies, through Hallmark rom- rom-coms, yep. through sitcoms like Friends, <clears throat> horrible. Like all you know, I used this. To, you know something? I used to watch that show religiously. Oh. I used to love that show. And now I look at stuff and I like, because I'm immersed in this content now, it's like you see stuff. Once you see stuff, you can't unsee it. Bingo. And now I'm looking and I'm like, oh my God, Ross Geller is the worst. Like who would ever want to sleep with that guy? And I used to be like, oh Ross, oh Ross. And now I'm like a doormat who's like pining after Rachel years and years and years. And I even remember saying to my husband at the start, I said, but he did get the girl. And my husband was like, yeah, after she slept with a bunch of guys and he was standing there like a moron the whole time. And yeah. I was like, oh man, once you see this red pill stuff, you can't unsee it. And <laughs> notice that it's called friends and they all sleep with each other. Right. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the giveaway that something's wrong. All right. I want to ask you about, Adele, could you do me a favor? You have the Valentine's Day one. How do you feel about Valentine's Day? Do you do you buy, do you, do you I, play the game? I typically hate any of these sort of enforced like yeah what, what is it it's like in four like you have to be like nice to me today or if you have to show you something special do you, to do me you play to the this game day. though okay <laughs> when i'm not in the i'm not in the country right now oh, okay that my girlfriends are in okay so you plural i'm not gonna that. they can't see it damn it if they see this you I've just, I've just ruined, ruined, I've ruined your entire life no just no no <laughs> i've ruined my entire life they know i'm a scumbag but they uh, but i've ruined the surprise if they watch this bit Oh, because um, I'm surprising them oh, okay. with uh, with a big book and a pair of flowers. Do, do you know what's really funny to me is that you are openly sitting here talking about how you're going to surprise multiple women on. I'm just like all my girlfriends are going to get something on Valentine's Day. Yeah, because I'm not. Nice. Too much. You're too much. Because I'm a nice guy. You're so funny. <laughs> so you know what I wanted to do on Valentine's Day. So Valentine's Day. Do you have it? Do you have it, Deli? Pull that up. I don't remember what it was, to be perfectly honest, but I pulled it up for a reason. So it's a Twitter thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, a tweet. Ever notice on how Valentine's Day? I can't even read that. I can read it. You want to read it? Ever notice how Valentine's Day commercials are geared towards what women want? Valentine's Day for men is an absolute scam. <laughs> yeah, we get to have sex with you if we get you a good gift. Yippee. Yeah. <laughs> Man's got a point. Uh, these glasses, by the way. <laughs> yeah, those are small, those tweets. What happened? He has great eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's just, this guy's got like. Did you have LASIK? 2020 vision, really? natural, all natural. Wow. And both my parents had glasses too. That's interesting. And they, I'm the only one in my family with blue eyes. <gasps> I am. I am 100 percent my dad's son though. I, A I, renaissance I, I man that. through and through. So here's the thing about Valentine's Day. What irritates me about it is I don't like these holidays that where it's like all about. Like, oh, it's all about women. The guys got to run around, get cards, get flowers, get doing all this. I don't like any of this stuff, these commercial holidays. So I actually tell my husband, please, you want to do something nice for me on a random day? Wonderful. But don't do it because some commercial ridiculous industry told you that you need to buy me a card and flowers for Valentine's Day. Like, please don't. I find it so cheesy personally. So I say no. But you know what? Like, what bothers me about it is like, Women should be doing that stuff for guys too. Like I like to do little special stuff for men. It's different stuff. Like it's completely different. Obviously I'm not going to buy him, you know, a bunch of roses and stuff like that. But I feel like you should be, and some of that is just attitude. Some of that for me, like either, you know, I'll cook a meal that I know he really likes. Like that goes a long way. Or I'll, you know, buy him something that's like, for example, my husband likes to like fix things. So he's into like tool. I don't know anything about that stuff, but I'll grab something like, hey babe, blah, blah. Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to like work on that. Or... I'll just be appreciative. Like I'll, I'll be appreciative of him for something he's done that I know like, oh, you know what? I should be more vocal about like, thank you for that. Or it's an attitude adjustment that I feel like there is a sense that on a Valentine's Day, women feel like it's coming to them. Like, oh, I get this. I get that. Why? It's the entitlement. Yeah, I don't, I just don't, I don't find that appealing. And I feel like it's either you're a strong, empowered woman who wants equality or you're not. And you're like a damsel in distress. So which one is it? You know, it, it bugs me. This I think stuff. it's a okay. It's a good litmus test for guys. Okay, if you tell your, because you can easily have this conversation with your girlfriend or your wife, and like, I hate this commercial crap. Our marriage, our relationship is special. Yep. I'm gonna spoil you randomly. That's what we when I ask. want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to participate in this crap because it's like you can't book, you can't get a restaurant. Like you know, all the flower shops are sold out. Like this is just super, it's just a, it's chaotic. It's like uh, what's that holiday thing? Black Friday. You guys have it. Yeah. It's like that. It's like, what's the point? Also dumb, by the it's way. Just, it's just like, it makes me showing affection towards you infinitely more difficult than it needs to be. Right. Purely based around the fact that everyone's doing it at the same time. Cool. Yeah. That's a very rational, logical argument, whatever. 
if your girlfriend or your wife, or whatever, gets annoyed at the fact that you don't want to surprise her, spoil her on Valentine's Day, but you will spoil her randomly throughout the year on other multiple other days, you need to check her. Because mm-hmm. you are probably going into a relationship that you don't want to be in, get into. You're gonna, probably going to end up like that guy with the balloon. Mm-hmm. Where she, <laughs> yes. Because like, she's, <laughs> yes. she's treating you like a piece of... She's treating like a like a giant wallet. Yeah. Like, it's just the, disres- and it's the disrespect showy. and entitlement of it. Is, like, women do... Oh, what'd you get for Valentine's Day? It's like a competitive thing sometimes yeah, with true. other women. And that's the hard part. That's the hard part as a man in, in a relationship is like, you... It's not easy because you're working against all of this negative... like. The rest of the world is trying to pull your woman in a bad direction these days. Right. And you're trying to be like, look, I want to have a loving relationship with you. Let's forget and ignore all this crap. Mm-hmm. And then that's why it's important to, for your girlfriend to have good girlfriends. Right. Like who aren't, you know, bitchy and, and whiny and whingy like that, where they're going to be like trying to make her feel jealous and try to break up your relationship. Mm-hmm. Because you love her more than her boyfriend does. I because have you're seen, showing love all the time. I have seen so many instances where a woman, she'll have a fight with her boyfriend. She's got these bad girlfriends, bad influence. She goes to them, looking for advice, and she gets more and more heated. With each second that passes, goes back into that situation. I have seen so many relationships crumble because women have low quality friends that they seek advice from that then give them bad advice, ramp them up. But also most of the time those friends are in either marriages they hate or they're single and they want company. So they're like, oh, let me wreck her situation as opposed to giving good advice to say, listen, go back to the table, try to work it out. He's doing this, you know, maybe that wasn't so great, but this, this, and this are like, you know, you've got a kid, you've got just bad advice all around. Women typically give trash at dating advice to mm-hmm. other women mm-hmm. primarily because they can't understand men or is it on per- is some of it intentional though i mean all of it is definitely intentional mm-hmm. when they're trying to if they're trying to sleep with their friend's boyfriend or whatever that's definitely intentional or they or they maybe like or they're want lonely. a crime they want somebody to party with yeah, yeah it's totally totally that's like that's very deliberate but they but even if they were trying to be their best friend mm-hmm. for their other friend they most they, just, they can't understand men most women don't understand men enough to give this kind of positive, mm-hmm. like, to be, give helpful, rational advice because they don't want to understand the dark parts of men. They don't want to understand the stuff that makes them uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like me saying, like, I can love multiple women at the mm-hmm. same time. That would make the av- most women very uncomfortable. And they're like, no, no, no. Like, the girlfriend of my, of my girlfriend would probably be like, unless she wasn't already switched on, she'd be like, why do you put up with this crap? Mm-hmm. Well, because she loves me for a start mm-hmm. and we're going to have a family together and we're going to be very, very happy. That's a good start. Mm-hmm. I'm also like in great shape, super well connected, making a ton of money. What else do you want? Mm-hmm. You know? Would but, you would you go for that situation, the, on the shoe on the other foot though? No, right? You wouldn't share no, no, your, no, no, no. no, you wouldn't. No, of course not. Okay. Of course not. <laughs> Double standard because men and women are different. Right, but Double I'm just saying, so that would No, because it's interesting. I, I You know, some... And, and what, I, what I do like about the space is that I've had an opportunity to talk to men who feel like very differently. And you're all, there's this perception that it's a club, right? The red pill space or whatever it is, it's a club and everyone's it's, living the same not. life. And it's not. <laughs> and it's really fascinating to me. I've spoken to you, obviously, Justin, you know, Rolo's been married for, you know, God knows how long he talks about the monogamy issue um, as a choice he's made for his life. And he speaks about that quite extensively and then you know there's a fresh and fit the tates the belmars i don't know if you know them but they live completely differently and what i like about it is that the male impact like the male empowerment message and the you know masculinity isn't toxic and all of that also has woven within it is like respect for everybody's individual decisions like it's your life you do what makes you happy i'm not going to try to control you it's a very like pro freedom you live your own life i'm not here to judge that i'm here to just tell you to get x y and z in check if you want to be the best man you can be i like that about them about what i've seen um for in in this space so far so i'm skipping around i want want to do just two more i know we're going over and they're all going to kill me but it is what it is i'll, I'll you know what i say get in trouble now and you know they'll deal later it's better to ask for forgiveness exactly. i'll ask for forgiveness it's fine and you know i'll just smile he <laughs> it's fine all right number 11 Let's go to um, toxic masculinity because this is a quote from you that I think is important. It's two, actually. So you say masculinity isn't toxic. Feminine men are. Now, what was interesting is there was a response. Click that second one. There was a response, and it says, there's nothing wrong with being a feminine man. It's always a question of knowing when to be masculine and when to be feminine. The balance of both is what produces a rational man. I want you to respond to that. I don't know if you saw that before. Have you seen that? 
I think I might have stumbled okay, across Okay, so do it, you but... think that men, <laughs> I love the facial expression, that's why I brought it up. Do you think that men are like balancing feminine and masculine and that's a, just a, a balancing no, we're, act? We're, no, we're being, we're being proactive, but since birth, we in the last you know, several generations have been proactively pushed towards the feminine. Mm -hmm. And every aspect of society is pushing men proactively towards the feminine. Mm. And no one's happy with that, obviously. Look around, everyone is upset about something. Mm -hmm. So that means it's not working. Mm -hmm. Like it's obviously not working. But you hear this message all the time, right? Like about to guys, oh, you know, you have to cry. You, you know, you're not allowed to show your feminine side. You're, you're being told to squash your feminine side. This is a talking point. This is a, that's out there. I don't have a feminine side. I don't have a vagina. <laughs> like where's this feminine side? I don't have a hoo-ha. Sorry, I was supposed to say hoo-ha instead of the V word. He's breaking all the rules. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've sworn on this. Sorry, I've sworn on your show. It's fine. Should I? But, uh, I'm from Brooklyn. It's yeah, fine. Like, whatever. I'm from Australia. We're worse. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's this, this idea that men need to tap into like a feminine side. That's, you, there's not something missing from you. There's nothing wrong with you mm -hmm. as a man. Stop thinking that there's something missing and wrong because you don't, un you're not, I don't know, like you, you don't cry or you don't like mm. share your emotions at, at the the women's meeting every Friday night or whatever. That, <laughs> I don't understand why guys run around thinking they're, they're, they're incomplete because society is telling they them they're them. incomplete. They them telling them they're incomplete. Society, tell society is telling them that they're flawed from the very mm -hmm. start. Yep. You're just a bad version of a woman. Mm-hmm is what they're telling them. And it's like, no, you're you're unique and you're a special butterfly. You're different. <laughs> you're not butterfly. the same. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you're, it's interesting. You aren't. You're not the same as women. So stop, stop embrace the difference. Embrace mm -hmm. the polarity. That's what makes for happy, healthy relationships, happy societies, happy families. Mm -hmm. Embrace that polarity. It's a beautiful thing. Stop trying to shame it away. It's horrible. It's interesting to me. Do you go back to Australia often? I went back for the first time in four years for Christmas to surprise my family. Okay. So what's interesting, and I'm, I'm guessing you're seeing, you've witnessed some of the authoritarianism that's gone on over it's there. It's horrible. Which is interesting it's to me because you horrible. don't share that mindset at all. We had some video, um, Delhi, the last one, you can just pull up. Children in Australia apparently eating cricket chips now. And, you know, they're fully indoctrinated. They're asked repeatedly about, you can play it while we're talking. Let me see if it's, I don't know. You have more chips. Good stuff. Do you like them, Annabelle? Do you like them? Yeah, they're great. Only because he said, do you like <laughs> them? Right. So, and we can pause that. I just wanted to show a second that of that. That is child. And then we can also show, um, let's go to the second one, the Instagram. We can play a little bit of that. You see that, Deli? Yeah. So this is, we don't even have to put the sound on for this, but you see that this is the new bug oh, eating God. campaign that's going on, that celebrities are saying eat bugs because Bill Gates is saying eat bugs. Yeah. And the fact that they have why, to- why, is, why, in your view, what, what is going on here and how serious is it? How much, how much tin foil do you want to put on my hat? As uh, much as you have, because I got plenty <laughs> over here. So, okay, for a start, you, you know it's bullshit when they have to have every, having all these celebrities endorse it. Mm -hmm. Like there should be, at this point, there should be certain things that trigger your bullshit meter. Mm -hmm. I did it again. It's fine. My bad. There should be certain things that trigger your hoo-ha meter. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, okay, this is clearly being pushed on me mm -hmm. for an agenda that is not in my best interests. Yep. Okay, so let's break this down. Bugs. Why would they want you to eat bugs? And okay, it's because it's, it's rules for thee and not for me. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you Bill Gates ain't eating bugs. Well, He's eating Wagyu. <laughs> it's interesting you brought that up because I don't know if you saw that article from the G20 that you brought up Wagyu. Do people know what Wagyu is in the chat? It's like this super Japanese expensive beef. beef. So like it's like it's not even that good. Is really? I've never had it. Is it like a filet mignon? Is that type of no, thing? No. So Wagyu is beef that they, they feed the cows beer and get them super, super fat. So the marble, the marbling is like everywhere. Oh, so it's Wagyu. like a fatty. It's a very, very, fa it's very okay. marbled beef. But it's actually, it's way better to eat grass-fed, pasture-raised beef. Infinitely better for you. That's what I eat all the time. That's where my jerky is. We, the audience Excellent. knows. Excellent. But the global elites at the G20, apparently they found the menu. And, <laughs> uh, you know, the Bill Gates and the Klaus Schwabs, they were both in attendance. They were eating the Wagyu beef. Um Course, like, Interestingly what? enough, while all the kids and you are being told to eat beyond burgers, nasty, and bugs. So, I mean, you know, listen, you, you talk about tinfoil hats. A lot of the so-called conspiracy theorists of the last few years have been proven right on, on virtually everything. everything. So, to me, this is very obvious what it is. It's, it's a desire by these elites to make society increasingly less healthy 
and more reliant on big pharma, more reliant on big government, especially you know if they're if they're not forming unions together, breakdown of the family, it's all connected. That's how you create yeah. a society of dependence. So, but I'm curious when you look, you know, are you concerned that the United States is going the way of the Australia? Like, how, how close are we to that in your view? I mean, it's it's Australia gets its influence from America more than anything else. So mm-hmm. it's interesting to see them like leading the way mm-hmm. <laughs> in, in this regard, but. Because America exports its culture everywhere yep. else, especially everywhere else in the Western mm-hmm. world. We just absorb that instantly. But Australians are unique in that they're different, very different culturally from Americans. And here's a good example of, of that might illustrate the difference between Australian and American cultures. Uh, in professional sports, in America, the best player is called a is MVP, mm-hmm. most valuable player. Mm-hmm. In Australia, they're called best and fairest. It's a different name, mm. which illustrates the, the, the attitudes of the country a lot, I think. I think America's a lot more competitive mm-hmm. and uh, kind of individual-minded, I guess, yeah. in that regard. Whereas Australia, there's this idea of like having a fair go and, and playing by the rules, mm. right? And Sounds that, like Obama's 2008 campaign. Now that gets very dangerous, the idea of like having a fair, fair go, mm-hmm. uh, treating everyone like you know equally and, and uh, playing by the rules. That gets very dangerous when the rules are designed to screw you over. Right. That gets very dangerous when the rules aren't actually in your best interest. Right. But everyone is going along with it. And that this happen. This is what has made me really quite depressed when I went back to Australia for Christmas. Seeing, I can't imagine. Seeing honestly. how much everyone had gone along with the bullshit and how much everyone had been brainwashed. Like you've been locked in your house for like two years, mm-hmm. like. You couldn't leave the country either. People, most people right. don't know that. They couldn't leave the goddamn country for two years. It was a legitimate lockdown. Yeah. Like it was not. They it couldn't was leave, they couldn't serious. Leave, they couldn't leave their state either. Crazy. So you couldn't, for example, from Miami, you couldn't drive to like New York. You couldn't drive to Louisiana or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You were stuck in your state and enforced by like a $10,000 fine. Yeah. Crazy. And so, okay, now they're trying to push all this bug crap on people. Well, where's, follow, like, where's the incentives? Like, why would they want to do that? Okay, well, Bill gets bought up a whole ton of farmland in America. Mm-hmm. All right. He ain't eating, sitting there down eating all the bugs no. at, at this meeting. None of the people at this meeting are. None of the people no. at G20 Summit, whatever, are. And it's they're just trying to make the population weaker because malnutrition makes mm-hmm. you not as cognitively switched on, makes you way easier to manipulate, make, way more susceptible to propaganda. That's right. Gee, we had two years where the propaganda machine was running full steam to try and convince everybody to be an experimental guinea pig. Mm-hmm. And there was enough of us that said no. And they're like, okay, what can we do to make sure that this percentage of the, this, this chunk of the population that resisted our propaganda mm-hmm. doesn't resist it the next time we try it? Mm-hmm. Okay, we make them malnourished. We give them crap food. Mm-hmm. You look back on like, uh, there's, uh, during the Roman times, they would deliberately feed the slaves like crap food. Oh, compared yeah. to the average Roman, for that reason, to try and make them to make them easier to control and more susceptible. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what this is all about. With the, and couple That's that the with like game. testosterone destruction and you know emasculating men and masculinity is toxic and the messaging that comes in with media and it's it's a wrecking ball. I mean, I I think the United States is in trouble. I I think it's in deep deep trouble. Just seeing what I cover a lot of stuff about the Matrix, the system. And just the leap that we are going to take from, you know, the pandemic and now it's going to be carbon emissions and it's just going to be mechanism after mechanism to control people. I've been looking at the 15 minute cities and everyone's like, oh, it's so good for traffic. And I'm like, you know what? It also looks like a really good potential quarantine zone. Just letting you know. So people, you know, I I am worried about that. You, You talk about that segment of the population, like, okay, enough people said no. What can we do to get these people? That This bubble is too small. There's too many people that get scared into just do whatever you want. Oh, here, I'll hand over my freedom. I'll hand over my health. I'll hand over my child. I'll hand over everything I have. What? Just don't make me scared. That That is a very big portion of the American population now. So I, I don't know what now. And maybe we can say a lot of people, a lot of eyes and ears are open now. Maybe the next round will be harder, different. I'm not convinced. I'm really not. I see too many people who are willing to just chew up, swallow, spit out, live according to an authoritarian demand. They're comfortable with it. So I don't know what what flips that. I think so. I, 
to that point you made about like America like uh, on the, being on the decline. I think mm-hmm. America's in trouble, right? I think America as a country is in trouble as a as a nation state as a gov- yeah. as a the American as a government. I think America's in trouble, but I think Americans aren't. Okay, mm-hmm. I think there's a, and there's a massive difference between America and Americans. <laughs> to mean to sound like that but <laughs> americans mm. in general are, are very sturdy people they're very independent minded in general so i think it's you know if you want a solution to this like okay you're worried that let's say worst case scenario all this bad stuff comes true there's just overarching controls again and again and again all right well what's the solution to this in general i don't think it's like gonna come through the government no, I really nothing, don't. Nothing I really don't. Comes from the government. I really don't because, like, once no government governments don't relinquish power; mm-hmm. they only grab more and That's more right. and more and more. Mm-hmm. Right? Certain governments grab a lot more, and certain governments don't really try to grab as much. But eventually, in the through the course of time, they're just grabbing more and more power and not relinquishing mm-hmm. that power back. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you do? Well, realistically, there's only a couple of solutions: you run, or you or you build like a homestead. You build like a, a community yourself. You find other like-minded people. You get some land. And America's a great place for this because there's That's a ton, a ton of land. People don't realize how cheap. Like, people Wyoming, about, Montana, like get it. Yeah, Kansas. Like, so yes. you have, you're going to have to make a choice. Okay, do I want to live like my lavish metropolitan lifestyle? Mm-hmm. Or do I want to, in, to set up a future for me and my family and generations of my family to come where they're not ingesting microplastics in every, like, thing they eat where they're not constantly bombarded with like estrogen mimicking compounds and shit in the water table like where they're actually consuming real food grown on the farm they can see the cow that they're eating they, right. that they're making the milk from they can see the cow that they're going to slaughter in six months time and eat and have enough food mm-hmm. for the next year like getting back to basics i think yeah. is the way we actually solve this problem as like the small group of people who resisted the propaganda brainwashing yeah. let the cities rot i don't care about the people who want to live in big cities, mm-hmm. they could, like, and I'm not—I don't mean this personally against anyone, but if it's no. like those are the places that are going to collapse first and and succumb to the control first. Mm-hmm. So what what's the opposite of that? All right, well let's let's maybe you don't like Wyoming because you've just never been there. Like it's you, actually beautiful. These places are lovely. They America's are gorgeous. America <laughs> is beautiful, America. and it and it it does take a mindset adjustment, especially if you've lived in the cities for a really long time. But it's funny this morning we were looking at properties and. Exactly what you're talking about, because that's those are the priorities of my life. I don't spend money on like city stuff. We don't go out to eat. You know, I cook everything home. But my money is spent on like ordering food from farms that I know and I trust and things like that. So, and wouldn't you rather just have just be next to that farm or that be your right, own farm? Right, and then you're growing your own right. food, so you have a and safeguard. And okay, against I understand this is ex- this not the average American can't afford that. Cool, because mm-hmm. it's not cheap. Like mm-hmm. as cheap as land is in America is not cheap. General, neither relative, is the city, though. Neither is a city, right? Neither is a mortgage on a, on a house. That's right. It's, but okay, I can get land for about the same price I can get for an apartment here in Miami. That's easily. Right. Easily. Oh, yeah. Easy. No. It's- and you can get, but you don't have to do it alone. You don't have mm-hmm. to do it alone. Find other like minded people and build a community together. Yeah. Like, it, the, there's nothing stopping you from pulling your money together, mm-hmm. pulling your resources together, and they say, we're going to buy that prop, brother, plot, plot of land or whatever. You live on this end, I live on this end, we'll right. divvy it up. And we'll have we'll, you you grow sheep, I'll grow cows, whatever the hell, and you share. I love There's it. There's nothing stopping that, you know. I love it. I love it. All right, we have to. Do we have any extras, Deli, to get to? Okay, we're gonna have to wrap in a couple of minutes. Um, I've had a blast talking to you. Me I too. of course had even more topics. There's always more that you can talk <laughs> about. Uh, I'm gonna close with one question for you, not related to this, but um, you had said earlier that women don't really understand men in large part. That oftentimes when you know a woman is given another woman advice about a man, they're getting it wrong because they don't really understand men. Do you think that men understand women? Do uh, you feel like you have a solid hold on women? I think it's you can prove that through results. Okay. Like, am I in a, am I in a happy relationship? Yeah. I'm in multiple happy relationships. Okay. So I know something that the average the average guy is not the average. So would you guy, say the average guy does not understand women? Yeah, I think. Then. Well, I think the average guy has been deliberately misled about female nature. Okay. From from childhood, through thing through things like Disney movies, through things like Hallmark fantasy rom coms, through things like Friends, like all this stuff I is deli- a lot of deliberately <laughs> giving men the wrong impression of women and what. And what women are attracted to, mm. what women will respect in a partner—that's mm-hmm. a big one. 
Yeah. Right? Because if women don't respect their man, that relationship is trash. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, no, I don't think... I think think the average man has unfortunately been susceptible to a lot of brainwashing, Mm -hmm. which is designed to screw over the family unit and make men and women very combative against each Mm -hmm. other. Because that's obviously the world we're living in right now in America. You are going to make a lot of heads explode with Excellent. your commentary, not just here. Um, and I, I had this conversation about Tate. I don't know Tate. I know you know Tate. Um, I don't know him personally, but what I've said is very unique about him is that he will speak about the dating stuff, all that, yes, but then he speaks about the politics. And people like you are very threatening to the system. I will say that. I um, I, I'm not that much of a threat. To be well, I mean, listen, anybody who is <laughs> Ignore willing, me. I'm not. anyone who's willing to... <laughs> be front and center and say how they feel about these issues and challenge the status quo and challenge the messaging coming down the pike is deemed as threatening. I'm glad you're doing it. I sometimes will get guests on here that I want to press on the politics and they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to target on my back. And I'm like, I get it. But I'm also like, oh man, no, that's the wrong answer. You know, because you, you, you gotta, you gotta, the fight has to start somewhere and it's really with each individual person in my view. So I want to thank you for being here today. I had a blast. Pleasure. Audience, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Don't make Sterling have to yell at you and give you bad sex tips because you didn't hit subscribe and like. That would be really, really rude if you did that. (laughs) And I'll be back here on Wednesday. Just me. Uh, I got a panel of modern women on Wednesday that I'm going after. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you then. Bye.